This is the third part of our series on creating attributes. First, let's toggle on invisible and see how this works. So we'll just toggle it to invisible and we'll click OK. Now we can see that in the background, it already changed the text so that now the attribute is actually invisible. So I could apply, but there's no need. I'm just going to click OK here. And it's done. The attribute is invisible, but it does exist. So we're going to now fix that one more time. So we'll go to Batman. Da -na 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 -na. Right, guys? <laughs> and then we'll just edit this one more time. And let's turn invisible off. Let's actually move this so we can see it happening in real time. So there it is. Literally, it's happening in real time as we're modifying the attribute. So we can literally toggle that whenever we need to. Now, I will demonstrate how invisible can be toggled in a different way. So let's click OK and OK with invisibility turned off. I'm now going to go to a command. So A-T-T-D-I-S-P. That is the one. So we're now going to turn this on and basically or activate this command, so to speak. And we can see that we have different options down here. So we have the normal setting, which usually means that it's going to allow the setting within the edit attribute dialog to control how this works. So then we have on and off, and these will override the invisibility settings. We could actually see that if we went back to that dialog, it did give us these instructions. So if I basically say off, now the text is gone for all attributes in the drawing. So that's how this ATT disp works. So let's turn everything back on. And we'll just go to, if we set it to on, then visibility will basically not work. Let's test that theory right now. So let's go back to our Batman command. Then we'll edit this here. And let's actually see what happens. If we try to make this invisible, you can see here on the screen, it's not turning invisible. And if I click OK click K and apply and OK, nothing will turn invisible. So this variable should be invisible, but it's not because the ATT DISP command is basically overriding it. I'm going to go back to normal, and you can see now that the text has modified itself based on its own setting, not the global setting for the ATT display or disp command. So let's go back to our Batman command, and you can see how commands are extremely useful for editing attributes and attribute definitions. So let's actually select this, go to edit one more time. We do not need invisible anymore. Now let's look at verify. The verify mode is very peculiar. And like I mentioned earlier, by default, it doesn't really work. But there are two commands that we can use to actually toggle this and allow it to display itself properly. So you can see that just by mousing over this, we can see that it's telling us that it's going to prompt us to verify that the values that we put in are correct. So we're going to turn it on right now, and I'm going to display basically how it doesn't really do anything. So how this works now is that, yes, the block does have this, but we do have to insert a new block in order for this to work. So I'm just going to go to insert right here, and you can see I've made my own little tab in the ribbon here. So this one is similar to the home one. I've just added one extra little panel to make a bit more use of it here, the uh, views panel. I use it quite often. So now I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to insert my block. I'll put it over this one. And now you're going to see that basically it does prompt us as per usual in this dialog right here, the attribute dialog, which we'll see why I'm calling it that very soon. Even though it says edit attributes, it is also the attribute dialog. We're going to just type in D04 here and click OK. And you would think that verify would ask us to prompt us a second time but nothing really happened. And this is acting just like as if verify was off, which you saw when we put in the O3 door. So how does it exactly work? Well, firstly, I'm going to modify this. So I'm just going to go back and modify our attribute. And I'm going to turn attribute off for now just to see what happens while uh, verify is off. Excuse me. Uh, we're going to turn the verify function off. So it's off again. We're going to click OK. And then I'm going to click Apply and OK again. Not that we need to click Apply, but just in case. And now let's insert this. So before we do, of course, if we insert it, just to display what happens when we do try to insert it, it'll basically be exactly the same. It's as if nothing has changed. So here I'll put another door right there. It's asking us once again to input our data with the prompt. So the prompt is pumping up. And that's it. And we're done. So it seemed like Verify basically did nothing. Now, we do have two very interesting commands. The first one that allows verify to essentially work is the attdia command right here. And this one basically asks us for one or zero in the input. So right now, one basically means it's turned on. Zero means it's turned off. 
Now, this dialog, that's what this stands for, the attribute dialog command, is basically going to be turned off by typing in zero and pressing enter. Now that we've done this, let's insert this one more time. I'll delete a couple of these since we don't really need them. So we'll just go back to the 04 version. Insert, we'll do this one, we'll put it above again. And now you can see that the command prompt itself is asking us, and because we have dynamic input, it's asking us next to our cursor. But of course, it would ask us in our command prompt down here as well. It's now asking us, what are we supposed to specify for this? And we can see that the prompt is quite useful here because it shows us our prompt. And then next to it, it's giving us the default value inside of those less than or greater than and equal to, uh, or excuse me, less than or greater than signs. The equal to, of course, is equals. <laughs> so now I can just type in D05 once again press enter, and there it is. I didn't need the huge dialog box in order to do it. I basically turned that off. And so with that off, that also is quite useful. Let's do one more thing. We do have an interesting command here that's also going to mess with the verify thing a bit. Now, before we do it, let's see what happens if we use verify, and let's modify it so that verify is turned on now that we've turned our dialog box basically off. So we're going to edit this here. Verify is on. OK, apply and OK. Let's insert one more block. We'll just put it above this one this time. And we'll see what happens. Basically here, it's asking us once again to input the data. So that's fine. Let's do D06, enter, and there it is. The verify dialog is now working. We are now prompted a second time whether or not the data is correct. This doesn't seem to be quite useful. It seems to be a bit redundant, but it is there for a reason. This is how Verify works. You basically can't use Verify with the dialog box because the dialog box is assuming that you don't need to verify whatever data you're putting in. The dialog box displays it really nicely. While without the dialog box, which is resembling older versions of AutoCAD, the Verify function could be useful if you're working rather fast and you basically are inputting data very quickly and you don't want to make any mistakes. So. Why not? You can turn that on. Let's make this one 06 once again. Let's say I wanted to revise it. No, 06 isn't right. Let's make it 07. And then we'll do enter. And there it is. We now modify the name after inputting it for the first time. So that's how verify works initially, of course. Now, there is one more command that's quite useful that kind of overrides this in a way. Dia rec. So basically, this is going to be allowing us to, oh, looks like the command didn't pop up. Oh, excuse me. It is ATT rec, not DIA rec. <laughs> there we go. So this is basically the attribute requirement box. And you'll see once again, it's asking us for a value, basically one or zero, basically are the values. And so if we set this to zero, now some interesting things happen. Let me get rid of some extra doors here so that we don't keep going up and up and up until the uh, end of time. So I'll insert the block one more time here and you'll see what happens. I just inserted it with its default value and it did not ask me for the actual data here. This could be useful in a few instances, but I find it to be not so useful because now only the default value is being used here. Almost like constant was turned on in our modes. So this is very similar to having constant toggled on all the time or not. And this applies to all of our attributes. So in this instance, I'm actually gonna turn that back to status one, because that is quite useful. I'm going to go and edit the attribute one more time. Uh, and I'm basically going to turn verify off. So we'll edit this. We don't need verify anymore. We'll click apply and okay. And of course, I do wanna change the setting with ATTDIA to set it back to one, because now the prompt will pop up. There's no need to verify twice. And the prompt, in my opinion, is quite nice. So I'll insert the door one more time just to make sure that all my settings are back to normal. There we go. There's our nice big prompt on the bottom right corner. We may as well use this, especially if we have multiple prompts in one block. This means that you can associate multiple different attribute definitions and each one will have their own prompt here. And this list can start to populate. So we could still use the command line for it. We would just input our first prompt, enter the next prompt, enter, et cetera, et cetera. But seeing it all visible here is quite nice. It allows us to input data in this list in any order that we want to. Hence, this prompt does have a big use and it is available in newer versions of AutoCAD. So let's do 05 for this one. We'll click OK. And there it is. Now we're back to some rather efficient settings for this particular mode.
In order to demonstrate the constant and preset modes, it'll be much better if we make another attribute definition within our block, or we're going to see how it works differently from the first one that we created. So let's select one of our blocks, right click on top of it, and go back to our block editor. Now we're going to add another attribute definition right here, or we could have typed in att def. Now let's give this one a different name here. Let's do this for the height of the door because now we are specifying the tag of the door, but maybe the height is useful information. We could also leave it invisible if we needed to. In this instance, we'll leave it visible so that we can see what we're doing. So we'll do H X X X X. That way we're accounting for two uh, characters for the feet and two for the inches here. And then the default value here, we can make it H 10 feet zero inches, pretending that our walls are about 10 feet tall, or maybe the door itself. So actually for a door of this kind of size, I think that an eight foot tall door would make a little bit more sense here. We could even make it eight foot three, just to have some data here. And let's put that zero in the front so that we can see what we're dealing with here. Very nice. So now we're going to look at our modes here and we can see that while constant is turned on, the verify and preset modes are actually turned off. So constant basically makes it so that there's nothing to verify and preset you'll see soon acts similarly to constant, but if constant's not on and presets on, we're going to see the differences very, very soon. It's actually very similar and we'll see how that works. Now, just in case we will put a prompt here, so we're going to say H equals question mark. Why not? But if we do turn constant on, the prompt is essentially hidden. It is there in the background, but it is not going to be hidden or used whatsoever. So we're going to make this attribute constant. And then later on, we're going to turn our existing other attribute down here into a preset. And we'll see the difference between them, if any. And that should be interesting. Let's change our justification just to make things a little bit better. We'll change our text height to 1 8 of an inch to make it the same as the other one. At a quarter inch scale, it's going to look very nice. All our other settings here are looking great, so we're now going to click OK. Now I'm going to place this text here, so I'm going to right click and then, or sorry, hold shift and then right click to get midway between two points. Let's place this here and here. Perfect. Now we have this centered really, really nicely right here. Let's also change the layer here so that it's also magenta. Our door name layer is ready for us. Let's now close the block editor. We're going to see what happens. We're going to save our changes, and you're going to see something very interesting. If you add another attribute to a block, all existing blocks will now modify themselves in order to get that attribute. Now, this one here is missing the other attribute below here because there never was one to begin with. And when we added it, the first one does not update the blocks here. But the second one will be updated and added automatically to blocks. So that's a very interesting little tidbit for you guys to see here. So now let's see what happens when we insert a block after the setting has been toggled. Let's go to the insert drop down and let's click on our block one more time and let's see how constant works. We can see here that the prompt for the first value is there, but with constant turned on, the second prompt is not here. So it's just going to input that eight foot three inch data without us being able to change it. Let's make this our 06 door and click OK. And there it is, constant pretty much works just as intended. Now let's see how the preset function works. The preset mode is actually very nuanced. I'll demonstrate how it works. You would think to go into the block editor and basically add it to the first variable to test between preset and constant and see if there is really a difference between them. So we're just going to type in Batman and I'll show you guys something very odd that happens. So I'll make sure that this attribute is selected. We're going to click on edit here and then preset will be turned on by us. We're going to click OK. The mode says P next to it, so that's good. This one says C for constant, so that's excellent. We're now going to apply and say OK. We're going to close the block editor and we're going to save our changes and we're going to see what happens. I'll just go and insert this block. And basically, it seems like nothing really has changed. The prompt comes back up. It's asking us to change this. We'll make this 07. But you would think that the preset would use the default value, very similar to constant, but in this case it didn't. Isn't that strange? Let's check and see if our variable worked. And now I'm going to type in the Batman command while not inside of a block, and you'll see something very interesting. You'll see that under modes, that P is now gone from our attribute, which is very strange. And you can also go back into the block itself and see that P is still gone from there as well. So the setting that we toggled off for preset actually 
was removed when we were finished with the block editor. It did not stay with the block and with the attribute, which is very odd. So now if I edit it again, you'll see that preset is turned off. But when I'm not inside of a block and I turn preset on, I will then say OK. We can see the P is there. Let's hope that it stays this time. So we'll click Apply and OK. Now let's see if it works by editing the block attribute outside of a block. And so we'll now insert our block right here, and boom. That's exactly what we were expecting, that now the preset acts very similar to constant and just puts in our default value for that attribute. So when we go and we're going to edit this block, or actually let's edit the attribute one more time just to see if preset did stay, now the setting works and it is there. And if we go to edit the block itself and then we type in the Batman command, we can see here that preset is still in the mode. If we try to actually turn it off from here, it'll still be turned on. So we cannot really edit these attri this attribute in particular effectively in the block editor. We'll actually want to be outside of the block editor to make sure that our mode sticks with our current settings. So it's a very interesting nuance. I don't know if this is an, a bug or if this is intended within AutoCAD itself, but it's a very interesting situation in which you want to make sure that you're editing that block attribute within model space itself and not within the block itself. That way, certain modes like preset will be toggled on and stay on when you use them. This is the end of the third part of our series on creating attributes. Part four is up next.